Hey guys, in this video, I am checking out a lens that was sent to me four months ago. This is a Brighton Star 50 millimeter f1.4 uh, manual lens for your Sony APS-C E mount. So it's not a full frame lens, it's just APS-C only. Um, and it comes in this very small box. Now inside of this box, you get some nice padding for the lens. You get a microfiber cloth, your usual assortment of manuals, and the lens itself. Now on the lens, you get a metal front lens cap and a plastic rear lens cap. So here is the lens. It's very compact, as you can see. The focus ring is on the front. As you rotate it, you'll notice that it is relatively stiff, but very smooth. Rotations, you get almost 180 degrees, and that front barrel does extend as you rotate it to focus. The aperture ring is towards the back of the lens, which is where it should be. Very stiff once you get it going, but that initial little bit is pretty light. So I found that when I was using this lens, I did accidentally bump this on several occasions. Nice and large convex front lens element. Take a look at that, just one large piece of glass. This lens is constructed of six elements, so pretty simple. Um, however, it does have a number of coatings on it, which should help its performance. 52 millimeter filter thread on the front, Brighton Star and 50 millimeter f1.4. Around the back, no electronic connections. You do get a metal mount. Um, and again, this is for APS-C only. So if you use this lens on a full frame Sony, you're gonna get extreme vignetting in the corners. Overall build quality of this thing is nice. It feels very heavy in the hand for the compact size. So it's made out of all metal and glass. So uh, definitely doesn't feel like a cheap lens, but I have to say the silver color does make it look a bit cheaper. It does make the overall setup a little bit more front heavy, but it's not a huge deal. I found that this lens was very comfortable to walk around with. So for travel use, it's nice and compact and I wouldn't hesitate to take it with me. I've reviewed a bunch of inexpensive manual focus lenses for Sony APS-C. When it comes down to it, performance is what matters most. So let's take a look at some sample photos and videos using this lens on my A6400. All these are done handheld. No post-processing, no correction, no picture profiles, no editing of any kind. Here we go. So that is it for the sample photos and videos, and I don't know about you guys, but I was thoroughly surprised by this little lens's performance. Uh, again, I've reviewed a lot of these, and you get into the same routine of reviewing them, and a lot of them just feel very similar, and they perform just as poorly as the previous one. Um, this is a bit nicer than I expected, 
and especially in the center, it is decently sharp. Now, the one thing that I should say about the sample photos is that 95% of them were taken wide open at f1.4 on this lens, which makes it even that much more impressive. In the center, I found that this lens is really sharp even at f1.4. In the corners, it's a different story. It's not quite as sharp, but if you're buying a lens like this that's inexpensive and it's at 50 millimeters f1.4, most likely you're gonna be using this for portrait work and if your subject's in the center, then you're fine. You don't really care about corner sharpness because that's gonna have a bunch of bokeh in theory. The skin tones and colors when paired up with the a6400 are excellent. If you have the newer line of Sony cameras, a61, a64, and a66, these cameras do an amazing job with skin tones. When you compare this lens to something like the Sigma 56, uh, the Sigma 56 definitely has a little bit more of that warm kind of almost Canon colors that most people are looking for. I decided to just try doing a, a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison between this cheap lens and the Sigma 56 and this is what happened. So when you stop down both of these lenses to f8, you expect everything in the frame to be nice and sharp. In the center, it's relatively close between these two. As you move into the corners, you'll notice that the Sigma 56 maintains its sharpness, whereas the Brighton Star lens gets a bit soft. Wide open at f1.4, you get a nice image from both of these lenses. I mean, it's surprising how good this $90 lens performs. Moving into my wife's eyes here, you can see that the Sigma is still noticeably sharper, as you would expect. I think the Sigma 56 is one of the sharpest lenses available for Sony APS-C, and that's why I recommend it so much. As I move and look at the bokeh, you'll notice that it is nice and creamy on both lenses, but just a touch more creamy and less of that onion ring bokeh that you see with the Brighton Star. So this is a surprisingly good performer. For me to even pit it up against the Sigma 56 tells you a little bit about my overall impressions of this little lens. Now using it out in the field was very easy. I found that one of the nicest things about it is that the focus ring is nice and smooth. It's so much easier to nail focus on this lens than it is on so many other manual focus lenses that I've used. I probably threw away maybe 15% of my overall photos. A typical manual focus lens like this, I'd probably throw away about 30%. So focus ring is really good. Build quality is solid, no issues whatsoever. The flaring on this lens is pretty interesting. As you can see in the samples here, it's not overly distracting. I think it's very artistic if you use it correctly. Pretty well controlled and mind you, this is all done without any sort of lens hood because there isn't one included for this lens. The one not so bright spot about this lens is the chromatic aberration. It is pretty horrendous. Um, and you see that pretty frequently with these very fast primes. The Sigma 56, for example, does a much, much better job of controlling chromatic aberration. So in conclusion, this lens is surprisingly good for the money. It's $90 on Amazon. You can go out and buy it right now. And for $90, I don't think that there is another lens out there that performs this well. I would say that this lens even gives the 7 Artisans 55 f1.4, which up until this point was my favorite manual portrait lens, a run for its money. And this is less expensive than that lens. Um, I think it performs a little bit better. If you are in the market for an inexpensive manual focus portrait lens, then definitely check out the link down below to Amazon where you can read more about the specs on this, which is pretty interesting because I was just on the Amazon page and Brighton Star is very honest uh, as far as the way that they describe this lens because they say, again, very accurate. Most companies won't admit that their corners aren't sharp at f1.4, but Brighton Star did. Ultimately, if you have the budget, the Sigma 56 is still my recommendation and it is still my favorite portrait lens for Sony APS-C. It's $400, but the build quality of this, the colors, the way it renders, bokeh, so smooth and creamy, and then the autofocus that you get is well worth the extra $250 to $300 over something like this. But if you're starting on a budget, you're starting on a budget. So. $90 is all you can afford. These are the lenses that you might want to start with. So um, that is going to be it for my review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all of your likes, comments, and support. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of these samples and if you guys have ever heard of this company or if you know of another company that makes manual focus lenses for Sony APS-C that I haven't tested. 
post that down below. I'm interested. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.